<laughs> hey folks, <laughs> Joseph A. Sabora here, and you know why I'm laughing hysterically? <laughs> You know why? Because I just watched, without a doubt, one of the most laughable films I've ever saw. And I just watched this on my computer. <laughs> you know what the movie I'm talking about? I'll give you. It's called... Unfriended! <laughs> Okay, uh, but, but seriously, yes, th this is the movie uh, that just came out back in April. Surprisingly enough, the same time as Paul Blart's Small Cop 2. And, yep, this is basically what it is. A movie about cyberbullying. About a bunch of stupid friends who just bullied a girl who just committed suicide. And wants up taking revenge on all of her friends who actually treated her like this. So, the, in, in other words, her spirit actually goes around, you know, typing on the computer, you know, going on Skype, going on YouTube, going on Facebook, going on every single fucking site on your fucking laptop, and just go around killing your friends. Just like that. Well, it's so easy, even a caveman can do it. Big deal. Well, I just wasted 82 minutes on my entire life that I'll never get back. But it's not surprisingly that this is the same studio that gave us 50 Shades of Shit. And it's from the producers behind Insidious, Paranormal Activity... You just can't go wrong with how stupid this movie really is. Because we've seen movies like this before. Yep, that's their scheme. They want the audience to bring you in to watch something this scary that they just have to post it on the internet for attention. And yes, there have been movies like this before. There was a movie called Fear.com and that was a stupid movie. There was a movie called Catfish, which really wasn't a horror movie as we speak, but it got the idea of doing a documentary with the click of a mouse on the internet. Also released from the same studio, Universal Pictures. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, do we really want to see movies like this? I mean, yeah, I understand that cyberbullying is wrong. We get the message, too, and I agree. It sucks. But, do you have to make a fucking horror film about this? Well, in Hollywood, anything's possible. <sighs> Unbelievable. And now I know why films like this makes more money. It just makes you wonder why Hollywood loves to fuck with us. You know why? Because they're a bunch of greedy bastards. That's why. And you know what's really disgusting about this? This movie had a higher rating. On Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, and even IMDb. You know why? Because people are fucking stupid! That's why. 
I don't get it, really. This piece of shit gets a 61% on Rotten Tomatoes, 59% on Metacritic, and 5.8% on IMDb, while all the good movies out there, well-made films that's not shot in a, on a fucking desktop screen, or any of this other garbage, and they get a lower rating. One of my favorite movies gets a shitty rating on Rotten Tomatoes. A lot of, of the other classes gets a shitty rating. And yet bad movies like this and all the other garbage movies gets a fucking higher rating! I swear to God! I'm sick of this shit! When would this shit ever end? Seriously. Well, doesn't matter because it's going to be on anybody's worst list. Well, in my opinion, that is. Well, I might as well waste my fucking time with this shitty movie because here it goes. The movie stars Shelley Hennig, Moses Jacob Storm, Renee Alstead, Will Peltz, Jacob Wasowski, Courtney Halverson, Heather Solsman, Mickey River, and Cal Barnes. It's written by Nelson Greaves, and it's directed by Levon, or simply Leo, Gabazeo. This is such a stupid movie. How's this for a plot? The movie is set in Fresno, California on April 12, 2014. Yeah, that's right, because I guess a beautiful city like Fresno, California gets all the shits. Unbelievable. Anyway, it focuses on a high school student named Blair Lilly, who's played by Shelley Hennig, which we basically just focuses on her Apple laptop computer, which, yes, you get to see her, uh, her actual screencast of the entire laptop, where she's just then making contacts. You know, she has a lot of Skype, YouTube, Facebook, um, you name it, everything that she has on her computer. While she's just, you know, wants up uh, watching a an article involving what happened a year ago that her childhood friend named Laura Barnes had committed suicide. Laura was actually a victim of cyberbullying which um, after YouTube uh, video depicts her intoxicated passing out and already covering in her own feces which is uh, yeah she actually shits herself so Blair briefly watched the recording of the suicide which I know that suicide video that we saw of Laura actually killing herself by you know shooting off her arm right in front of everybody yeah the entire world actually saw this unbelievable so uh, after Blair tries to watch the video she was already being contact over Skype by her boyfriend Mitch who's played by Moses Jacob Storm and the couple themselves were just you know losing their virginity you know they're just coming up with some sex video where <laughs> where Mitch was just being as violent as usual just you, you know just using a knife and actually forces her to to actually show her tits by taking off her flannel shirt. You can even see her panties. <laughs> anyway, they are later joined by three of their friends. Jess Felton, who's played by Renee Olstead. You know, a blonde girl. Ken Smith, a fat guy who's played by Jacob Wasowski. And Adam Sewell, just some typical nerd who's played by Will Peltz. And then all of a sudden, they discovered a faceless account by the name of Billy227, who they all claim that it might be Laura, or what seems to be, yeah, because it might be some hacker just hacking into her account. So after the group had noticed the, the exact account, they tried to make several unsuccessful attempts to get rid of them. But Laura's Facebook account had started sending cryptic message to the friends, which may suspect that this is, might be a prank by 
a girl who couldn't stand completely named Bao Rommel, who's played by Courtney Halveston. So when they invited to the chat, Jess's Facebook is suddenly updated with repulsive and compromising pictures of Val at the party. You know, getting drunk, you know, vomiting, smoking bong, you name it. Jess and Val had went into a massive argument where all of a sudden Jess who can who attempts to proclaim her innocence attempts to delete all the photos all the way around but they just keep re reappearing everywhere they go including how they send it to all their Facebook friends right there you know because they have their own, their own Facebook accounts too so as a result of this you know Bell eventually calls 911 to report an online abuse you know accusing Ken to be the harassment of all things. She actually signs off, annoying her friends. Ken states that he did not like Laura because it, you know she was nothing but a bully and she deserves everything she receives from the embarrassing video of her, which is true because she is sort of a, a complete bitch. Um, I know, I'm, I, I don't want to get into that because it's just, the, the film is so stupid. I even saw the video on YouTube. <laughs> I know, because it's part of the movie. I even typed it up, too, where it says, Laura Barnes, kill you yourself, which is definitely yourself. God, I hate the way they spell that name. Anyway, Laura emails the friends an Instagram picture of an email that Laura sent Val you earlier. She doesn't even know how to use the internet properly, either. Uh, trying to remove all the embarrassing videos and offering friendship, Powell rejected the play and told her to kill herself, and she did. Which apparently we just saw her already standing there. Like, we thought this was just one of those uh, pictures, frames, or something like that. Or maybe she's just getting a seizure. Well, we begin to find out that she was already being covered, forced to be drank with bleach, and already lying on the floor dead while the cops had arrived. It's just unbelievable. And, that, and it gets even worse. Laura begins to send photos to the rest of the group and resurfaces as a camera behind one of the users. But then all of a sudden, the fat guy named Ken actually stands up and and actually gets, you know, <laughs> gets killed. And yes, and where we actually get to see his arm actually went straight into the blender and actually sliced his entire throat up. And unbelievable. It's disgusting. And then Laura had forced his four remaining friends to play a stupid game called Never Have I Ever, which tries to threaten the loser's life. Yeah, basically it's a stupid game where everybody has to show five fingers and they had to like uh, do this in order to, uh, to find out if they're lying. And all of this is just part of a stupid game where they're actually lying to each other. And yeah, in that sort of way. And then after this... They're, they're the first person who dies. Fucking asses. Anyway, they also had another game called Trojan Destroyer where they had to try out a software where you can actually erase all these pictures and all this other crap that's uh, stuck inside the computer so everything would work so they wanted to deal with this anymore. Yeah, yeah, they thought that work and <laughs> yeah, that somehow becomes one of uh, Laura's plans. They started spreading a rumor that Blair has an eating disorder, you know, and the fact that she crashes uh, Jess's mother's car. You know, Mitch kissed Laura behind Blair's back. Mitch ratted Adam out to the cops for selling marijuana, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what exactly what happens to them because they all just got killed, you know, and Adam actually pulls uh, his father's gun and shot him right in front of everybody and then of course you know just suddenly uh, wants up uh, into the bathroom while the lights went off and then and she wants up getting killed with a hair dryer right into her mouth got stuck right into her mouth and then and then suddenly Mitch actually gets stabbed in the eye and then the movie apparently ends when Blair actually breaks down crying you know, for Laura to thanks for her help, but of course she must confess one thing. So Blair tries to, sh to place Laura by showing all the past photos when they were friends. Upload a video of her, Blair's Facebook account. 
But then we begin to find out that part of this was a trick. And then that's what happens because then Laura's ghost jumps out of the screen and tries to kill Blair. And then the movie ends like this. Oh man, I'm, I mean, what the fuck? Seriously. Why is this film got made? And I can see why it got made because, because it just proves the point that cyberbullying is wrong. And, and if shit like this had happened to you, you get what you deserve. That's true. But what's the point about this stupid message if we're going to get shitty movies like this? Okay? We had a documentary called Bully. And that's an interesting documentary if you haven't seen it. About what was it like if you were bullied at school. Especially if you're on, online with your friends and you get bullied by. That's exactly how everybody felt. But... Yes, I understand. Okay? We get the whole point already. We've been there before. But Jesus Christ. I mean, seriously, Hollywood. Why do we need movies like this? This is the main reason why I'm getting sick and tired of found footage movies like this. Or internet movies. Or any other kind that involves this crap. Okay? I get it, folks, alright? Why are we wasting our fucking money for this? We should be just going out and doing something. Than having to sit down on our asses and just do all the same crap that we always do. I mean, where is the creativity right there? This isn't really a movie. This is just internet garbage. That's all it is. It's a fucking 82 minute filled with garbage on a fucking computer big deal it's not scary I didn't find anything scary about this I was laughing I was laughing at how fucking stupid that these friends are that they treated her like this and how stupid that this person really is I don't give a flying fuck about these guys they're fucking idiots This makes me not want to use Skype ever again. I never even use Skype. Yes, I do have it, but I don't use it because of shit like this. Unbelievable. I don't give a flying fuck if these fucking idiots gets killed in the movie. You know what? I'm happy they got killed because they're fucking stupid. So yes, because it, it just even proves that even a ghost of a friend can actually go around invading other people's privacies and actually kill them one by one. Yeah, I get it, folks. That's your fucking movie. You wanted to make movies like this just to make us waste hundreds of dollars. Unbelievable. That's why. They're stupid. Fuck this movie. You know what? Fuck this shitty movie. I'd rather watch something good than this piece of fucking shit. I mean, I knew I was in trouble when I saw the poster. The trailer. The marketing. When I saw a picture of Blair actually screaming her head off. I knew I was in trouble. Because that was in the fucking movie. Unbelievable. You know what? Fuck this film. Fuck Hollywood for what they're doing to us. They've been shitting us with nothing but fucking remakes. Fucking found footage movies. Fucking actors who can't act for shit. You know, is this is what we're coming with these days? I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, okay, I, I love Hollywood. I love movies. You know, I am a movie buff. I can deal with what I can deal with. But I don't want to see shitty movies like this again. They never work. You don't learn anything about them. Because they suck. I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of being nauseous at the scene. People doing stupid things on the internet. Or watching a fucking hidden camera video of people doing stupid shit. 
Okay? I get it already. I don't want to watch any people's home movies. It's fucking boring. It's not fun. What's the point? Well, that's where you have it. So anyway, fuck Unfriended. It's a piece of shit horror film that gets more attention than it didn't deserve. So anyway, <laughs> I give this piece of shit zero stars. And I mean it. Zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later.